my name is David Handley. I'm with the University of Maine Cooperative Extension. I'm their vegetable and small fruit specialist. And in the next few minutes, we're going to talk about planting a strawberry bed. Now, the first thing you need to think about when you're going to plant a strawberry bed in your garden is to have your soil tested. The so soil pH should be around 6.2, uh, and your soil test will tell you what needs to be done. You can see a video on that uh, on our website. Once the soil is tested, you've got the fertilizer put in uh, at the rates that the soil test recommends, then you're ready to plant. Typically in Maine, we're planting usually in May, but we can go as late as June. After that, it's hard to get good plant quality and the soil temperatures are so high that the plants will be a little stressed. So really, as soon as you can work the soil in the spring, that's the time to plant. The plants themselves are very tolerant of cold soil temperatures, so you don't need to worry about that. Now, when you buy your plants from a nursery, order them from a nursery or buy them from a store, this is typically what you're going to get. These are called dormant crowns. These are actually living strawberry plants. And they consist of this area here, which is called the crown, and then hopefully a nice healthy root system underneath it. The crown itself is just a compressed stem. It has a terminal bud, which is going to produce leaves and eventually some flowers and fruit for you, and then a bunch of axillary buds, which go down along the side. And these produce little branches, uh, which in some cases are going to be runners, and we're going to use those runners to fill out the plant bed. And then sometimes will be branch crowns. So it will just be like a mini crown on the side here, and those will produce more fruit for you. So we want some of those too. But initially what you should look for is some green tissue or white tissue in the top. The crowns themselves should be firm, not mushy. And they should have a nice creamy yellow look to the roots. They shouldn't be black and they shouldn't have mold on them. If they do, there's been some problem in storage or in transport. You should take those back and get some nice healthy plants to start off with. So as I say, these dormant crowns should be planted uh, in the soil uh, about the, as, as the spring gets started in May. Typically what we're going to use is a matted row production system. This is a perennial system where we plant the first year and use the daughter plants or runners that come from these crowns to fill out the space between them to give us a nice full bed for fruiting next year. So to plant them, we just take a crown and put them in the soil, dig a nice hole with a trench in your pre-prepared soil, place that in. You want to dig the hole deep enough so that you're not compressing the roots. You don't want the roots to bend up like this. You want them to stay straight out. Now if there's some long scraggly roots that make that job difficult, you can always take some scissors and just trim them. Don't want to cut off too much. Don't cut off more than 25 percent of the total length. But just trim them up so they're nice and even. And then you can just put them in that hole. And the depth that you want to plant them is such that the soil comes to about halfway up that crown. Okay. So when we plant these strawberries, you want the soil depth to be right about here. Okay? We don't want to bury the growing point because you'll kill the plant. These aren't seeds, they're not bulbs, they're growing plants. And we don't want to bury them too shallow because if the roots are exposed, the plant will dry out. So dig that hole deep enough to bring them to about halfway up the crown. Then just firm the soil around them a little bit. You don't have to leave a big pit there because that will collect too much water. But firm the soil around those so that when the rain hits it, it won't wash it down and expose those roots. Now your spacing on planting in a matted row should be about 18 inches apart, as you see here. And what's going to happen is as these plants produce runners, we'll root those runners between these mother plants and on either side of them to fill out that bed. Um, and we can just go down the row. The trowel works pretty well, but we've also come across a, a nice method of planting strawberries. This is just a piece of 8 inch flat bar that we put a little bend in. And you can see we've carved a little nook on it. These aren't sharp, uh, but they are rounded. And one of the ways to plant strawberries that I think goes a lot faster, I'll move to my next 18 inch spot here, trim this root up, and I just place my strawberry right where I want it, and I just grab about a half inch of the root here. I don't want to grab the plant up here, I just want to get enough so that it will pull the plant down. Then I hold this straight up and down and just apply pressure down into the soil and push down. This method is really quick. It'll move you along the soil very quickly. We can plant a lot of strawberries. If you're only planting a few, uh, a trial works just fine. But if you've got a lot of strawberries ahead, a little simple tool like this can really speed the process up for you. Now, we talked about how to plant in the row. Between your rows, you can see behind me, I've already got a row planted here. You need about four feet um, because we're going to allow these rows to get out to about two feet wide on each side. We want to maintain a nice aisleway to be able to walk through here and be able to pick the berries next year on this side without standing in the bed on that side. So four feet between your rows, about 18 inches between your plants in the row. Once you know your varieties, if you have a variety that you know is not going to produce very many runners, 
These would be varieties like All Star, for example. You can cheat them in a little bit, maybe plant them as close as a foot apart. If you're growing varieties that you know produce an awful lot of runners, you can actually save money by buying fewer plants and spacing them further apart. These would be varieties such as Sparkle. You can learn more about varieties at the Cooperative Extension website. Now after we get our strawberry bed planted, we need to take care of them for the remainder of that season. One important thing to note is that we're not going to pick a crop in the first year. These are some strawberries that were planted about four weeks ago. Uh, so the ones that we just planted will be looking like this in about a month. And you can see they've grown, they'll kick out a few leaves, but the other thing they'll do is they'll start kicking out these flower uh, clusters. Now in the planting year, we want to remove these flower clusters. And it's very simple, you just follow the stalk back, just pinch it off between your thumb and forefinger, throw it down there. You want to do this when the flowers are still in the bud stage or just starting to open because then this stem tissue will be nice and tender and it pinches off really easily. If you wait till this big red fruit hanging off here, this stem becomes very woody and then you're going to have to go through there with scissors or clippers. It's going to take you a lot longer. But we just pinch that off. And the reason we do that is because we want to encourage this plant to develop daughter plants or runners. And you can see that right here in the plant next to it. These are already starting to kick out their daughter plants. So we don't want fruit in the first year. We want to tell the plant, concentrate on vegetative growth because we're going to use these runners to fill all the spaces between these plants and the top of the bed. We want the final bed width to be about 18 inches to two feet wide. We don't want to get any wider than that. So if they start slipping off to the edge here, we'll just hold them back in place. You can do that with just a, a clump of soil or use a little rock. Some people like to use the old fashioned hairpins to hold them in place, but this will force them to root. And then we'll have a nice solid bed that will flower next spring and give us our fruit in June. So pinch those flowers in the first year, get those runners going, and we'll take a look a little later at some nice runner development and how to pin those in place. <laughs>